What's going on, Tribe? My name is Nicole. And my name is Kia. And we are the co-founders of Glamorina. Yep. Glamorina is an inclusive women's lifestyle brand specializing in culturally inspired active wear, intentionally designed to complement all complexions and body types. Our mission is to provide a safe space in health and wellness where everybody belongs. Yes. And welcome to Behind Glamorina Moms on a Mission podcast, where we discuss how we balance being successful Black women entrepreneurs, working nine to five jobs, motherhood, self-care and everything in between. Yep. And so before we dive into today's topic, as we do every single episode, we want to do a mental health check in, check in with each other, check in with you and encourage you to do the same thing um, as you listen so another week, um, what's, what's your mental health looking like? Yeah. <laughs> um, my mental health, oh man. Um, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little all over the place, <laughs> a little all over the place. Um, yeah, I don't know why, I guess, you know, the school year is winding down. So for all of us parents, um, and I'm a teacher, so I joke a lot, you know, at school, May is a tough month. It's a month um, where it's very little days off or vacations or breaks or anything like that. And, you know, it's the end of the school year and we're all done. Like the kids kind of want to break. You know, I mean, we can't stop teaching. Obviously, we don't want to stop instruction. But at the same time, um, we're just kind of like, oh. Okay, we're over this. So yeah. I've been trying to relieve some of that. I've been trying to just do a lot of fun games and things like that with my students. I'm a math tutor, so I could do a lot of math. I've been taking the kids outside. A couple of times I've taken music and have done a little yoga before. Um, so yes, that, that's been helping me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just overall, just 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 ready. Ready for summer. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I mean, I'm not a teacher, but just all of the end of the year school activities. Um, mm -hmm. My daughter is about to transition into middle school. So just applying oh for schools gosh. and Yay. it's just crazy. The anxiety for middle school and um, you know, every just a lot of activities at the end of the year for them to be like um, the graduating class of their elementary uh -huh. school. Um, so I'm ready for it to be over, ready for summer, but mentally I think I'm okay. Just okay. Yeah. Getting better working on, right. you know, trying to find time. I feel like I haven't had enough time to find alone time or just meditation time, quiet yeah. time. So trying to work <laughs> on that mm -hmm. um, to find balance. But yeah, let's, I mean, I hope you guys are doing okay out there. I hope your mental health is cool. Yep. If you're stressed, like, you know, we all get stressed. Kia and I have our kids, our b work, business. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy. We, we're not sitting up here making it seem like it's peachy, but... Yeah, you know, just kind of find a way to get through each day. Take it a day at a time. Absolutely. And just know, shout out to all the mothers out there. We hear you. We see you. Yes. We love you. <laughs> mother's Day will be right, it's right around the corner. So happy Mother's Day to all the mamas out there or just any, you know, special mom in your life. What, regardless if you're a mother, mm -hmm. um, if you know someone that is a mother and is, you know, you have seen them push through um, the good and the bad times, definitely make sure you do something special for them. Yeah. So. And and because this is the episode right before Mother's Day to the women who who suffer during Mother's Day time, because whether you lost a child, whether you have fertility issues, whatever it is, we see you, too. Um, yes. You know, so mm -hmm. you know, if you've lost someone, lost a mom, we see you, too. So I just wanted to kind of call that out because a lot of people yeah. mentally get to a bad place during Mother's Day. So. It can be hard. Yeah, I love that you said that because it can definitely yeah. be hard. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So on a on a brighter note ish, let's get into today's topic. So this uh, is yes, um girl. something that's been trending. I've been getting back to listening to the radio, so I've definitely heard about this. So we want to talk about this conversation with Ebony K. Williams and I hate saying mm -hmm. her name, Ayanla Van Zant. Uh huh. I think that's good. Um, Ayanna. So, <laughs> her name is hard to say. I know people can relate. So they had this um one on one discussion on the Grio. The Grio, in case you don't know, is a black owned media outlet network. Mm -hmm. Talks about sports, news, movies, lifestyle, all of that stuff. 
So they had this one-on-one conversation. You guys probably have heard it. So we want to get into that, give our opinions on what they talked about and just kind of dive a little deep into that topic. Yeah, absolutely. So we watched the full um, interview. Ebony had Ayama Van Sant on there, um, like you mentioned. And, you know, during this one-on-one interview with Ayama, she's a TV personality. She's a life coach. And they were having this conversation on femininity and masculine energy versus feminine energy, which it's not just them talking about it. A lot of people are discussing it. Um, it's like you said, it's like a trending thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so during the interview, um, Ebony spoke on, you know, not wanting to settle and for, you know, black people and black women, especially, you know, we kind of are expected to settle in terms of, you know, the things that we want and inspire, aspire in life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Ayama, as if anyone saw the interview or at least, you know, paying attention to what's going on in the blogs, Ayama asked her, well, would you date a bus driver? And Ebony was just like, you know, well, if you own the company, (laughs) Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously Ayala uh, um, responded with, you know, that's kind of a problem. And it really opened up this broader discussion on, you know, s- dating and what you're searching for and your standards and just all of all of those topics. Right. Um, it was a good conversation. I definitely encourage all of our listeners to go and listen to the full interview. Mm-hmm. Like never just take sound bites, listen to the full interview. Um, because at the end of the interview, I do want to point out Ebony was like, you know, I'm open. Like everyone's open for a change suggestion. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. She was very respectful of Ayama and was like, listen, mm-hmm. if, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. And at the end she was like, thank you. You know, I'm, I'm listening and I hear you, you know, perhaps I can reevaluate. But obviously, at the end of the interview, you know, that little sound bit Mm -hmm. got out to social media and a lot of people were coming coming after Ebony on what she said. And so it kind of, um, you know, she a lot of stuff was going on, (laughs) basically. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that's that's so important, like the soundbite. So it happens every day where they take one little piece of the interview from somebody and it just runs away with it and it's the headline and things like that. So Uh from what I saw, what I first heard about was just the bus driver thing. Yeah. Um, And I feel like it's, it was a big thing because honestly, a lot of women have standards, right? Especially black women, you have standards, Mm -hmm. just like they talked about on, in the, in the video interview, you, your bar is kind of high. Our bar is high. So it's like, you're driving the bus. You can't do nothing for me. Right. right. Um, so, <laughs> and I feel like she got back. Okay. So we'll get back to the, the script a little bit. It's like she received praise and backlash. Right. Right. So, and I True. think that's why it's so, so popular because a lot of women, it's our, we girlfriends talk about it all the time. Like if yes. he can't, what, what does he do? You meet somebody new. What's his career? Like, what's his salary type of thing so yeah exactly it, what does he do that's yeah. one of the main questions well, yeah and if, and if you hear it's a bus driver it's gonna be questionable right mm-hmm. you're you're gonna get looked at like you dating a bus driver like especially mm-hmm. in the era we're in so mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. i praise as well and then she went back ebony after the interview once she started getting all this <laughs> feedback responses um tried to repost or post on social media, I guess to elaborate on what she meant or right. just to kind mm-hmm. of clear up her comment a little bit, um, mm-hmm. which a lot of people typically do. Yeah. Yeah. She got back on online and said, um, it was basically, she did reiterate. She said, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with driving a bus. I believe her mother drove a bus for uh, several years, but um, I do want to le- read just a little bit of what she said in her response. She said, It could be that Black America has been sold a narrative of average, regular, and typical being good enough for us. Hmm. Well, see, that's white supremacy. And in this case, it takes a form of conditioning Black Americans to happily accept being a permanent American underclass, she continued. But see, because I know the truth about Black folk in America, average will not or ever be good enough for me. And the gag is, I don't think it's good enough for you either. So it's definitely, um, like you said, I mean, I can... Just right off the top, like I can see both sides of Mm -hmm. of this conversation here. Um, I I printed out a couple of, you know, the tweets because I wanted to have a little, I don't know, 
for those watching, you can't really even see it, but I just want to read a couple of, um, of the tweets that, you know, in terms of the backlash or praise that people were saying after this interview came out, um, one person said, I saw the would you date a bus driver discourse and I want black women to collectively liberate ourselves from answering these asinine bad faith questions and establish boundaries. Nothing you say will make these people happy. Um, someone else said, do men get asked if they would date a bus driver? Just a whole another topic. The would-be bus driver conversation has the feeds and a serious bender. Two years ago, you were all kissing up to the essential workers of your Uber Eats, DoorDash, bus passes. Now you're all back to viewing them as worthless underachievers. Um, <laughs> the internet, yeah. Go in. I just love like listen to this. All right, whatever you want. So one person's like, two things can be true. You don't have to want to date a bus driver, but calling bus drivers mediocre is rude. And someone else, last one, uh, Yanla is uh, is so unserious asking Ebony Williams if she date a bus driver. The woman is a lawyer and a political pundit who travels in the kinds of circles where she'd be hard pressed to accidentally meet a bus driver, maybe a chartered plane pilot, but a bus driver. So which. OK, so it's a lot. It's I think mm-hmm. that some people are saying, again, listen, there's nothing wrong with dating a bus driver and. I think Ayala was saying that, you know, it's more about, okay, he might uh, drive a bus, but he if he really loves his mother, mm-hmm. if he goes to church, like if there's all of these other qualities in terms of love, then his income is should not just be the sole like determining factor. I think it's one of the factors, right? And we've seen yeah. a lot of like different blog posts and people talking about it. Everybody wants someone that's going to elevate them that's that's going to want to build with them because you can yeah. build with the bus driver yeah that's right what that's what i'm saying so here's the thing I, I i could relate to both sides a little bit where so we're all human right so ebony's going to respond with the you know the first thing that comes to mind and maybe not elaborate on the circumstances so it's like okay if they ask me nicole would you date a bus driver I might have some additional questions first. You know, how old is he? You know, what what stage mm-hmm. are we in our lives? Like, if if he's young, mm-hmm. this is not mm-hmm. his final career. Um, it, does he have a, a side hustle? You know, like is the bus mm-hmm. driving thing just temporary in his mind? Like, what are his end goals? Because he may not mm-hmm. want to do that forever. Um, and then I think Ayanla said, you know, maybe he just loves that job. You know, what if it fulfills him? Like, what if he's yep. driving bus buses for? people with special needs and he enjoys like giving back in a sense. So it's, it's just many factors that could play into their career. But I like what you said, Mm -hmm. as far as building, like, what are your end goals? Like, is this a forever thing? Like, do you just not care? Are you trying to be mediocre in a sense that you're not putting effort in to build your career? Yeah. Or is it like a, a passion thing? So it could be, you just have to know a little bit more about the circumstance before you, say yes Mm. or no (laughs) yeah that's true i mean i was just looking up like what's a typical salary for a bus driver because i wanted to know you know i remember when i was little i used to think like trash workers um didn't make that much but they do Mm. that's actually a pretty good job i mean some of these jobs can be um a pretty good job if they have a pension or you know retirement things like that in some of these jobs like the railroad jobs it just I, I'm not sure. Now, what I'm seeing on Google says 27 to 53K, um, which obviously, you know, it is like median income. Um, no, that, the, I, don't know. I don't know if that's like median. A lower, it's like a, the lower. I mean, the yeah. 27, obviously. Yeah. The yeah, 53 yeah. is like a, a decent. So if, if, you, if it was, again, the bus driver that was a 53K. But yeah, I think. Again, I feel like both things can be true. I mean, Ebony, like the one person had tweeted, she's a lawyer. She is in a circle of people that in that salary bracket. So she wants to date higher in terms of salary bracket. If she's looking at that too, as someone, because she mentioned something about um, she's looking for a provider and someone like a protector, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So if she can't, um, find that, you know, obviously she's looking for someone a little bit higher than that. Uh, there's nothing wrong, right? There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I think what other people are saying, and Ayala, Ayala Van Sant was saying, it's again, your the stand, it's good to have like these high standards. Cause I think that's important for us to teach young girls and stuff. Like you don't need to, you don't, it's not about settling, mm-hmm. but it's like about, I think adjusting, you know what I mean? Because as you will see, as anyone will see, as every woman, girl, 
teenager who gets older, it's in her 20s, in her 30s. As you get older, if you don't find your person and you get older, you will see that the dating pool is smaller and smaller. Mm-hmm. Okay. As someone who was in her mid and you know late 30s, who was still out here like dating and on the dating apps, that was me before I got engaged. Just I hadn't settled down yet. Um yeah, it's some slim pickings. And then if you have all of these standards, like all of this list, like, and, and if you're very hard pressed on, I'm not, you know, I'm not bending on anything. He needs to make 60K. He needs yeah. to, you kind of have to also realize like, is, does this person exist? Mm-hmm. Because if you want it to be a black man at this certain age, if you don't want them to have kids or only one kid. Yeah, like you're not being person- realistic. You're not being realistic out here. Is does that person exist if you want them to be black? If not, maybe you're going to step outside of your race and that perhaps you can. I think some people are really getting on Ebony because she have what I've seen in the public eye is that she dates mostly white men. Maybe she hadn't been able, but she said she's dated across racial across the board and she mm-hmm. still hasn't found the one um, to provide and protect. But I don't know. <laughs> I mean, to I each his own, though, because, yeah, you have, like, at this point in my life, like, I have my list, mm-hmm. and there's certain things that I, literally, I have it on my phone. Like, yeah, there's a star by what is a must, and then there's, you yeah. know, no star by mm, maybe negotiable, you know? Mm-hmm. So I feel like you have to be realistic. I don't know what Ebony's list looks like, but there's a lot of men out here who will, who are able to protect and provide. So I need more yeah. details, like, <laughs> no what what are you what else is is involved in that because you know but it, it's it's on her you know like you mm-hmm. said it, the older you get the the options are are slim especially for her being looking at like a higher tax bracket for a man like yeah if if you want that and you want somebody who's going to be faithful to you most of the time when men are making that much money you're not you may not get mm-hmm. that yeah so, i mean a lot. To each yeah you're own. right yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think, again, the main thing is just like, I mean, if you're really looking for love and a life partner, it's okay to have your list. I mean, I I remember my mother even told me when I was dating, it's just like, you know, write down what you want and, and pray about it. My mother's very mm-hmm. spiritual um, person. So it's very much like, ask God for these are the qualities in a man that I want. You know, mm-hmm. I just think that, like you said on your list, you have some that are non-negotiable and some that are, okay. He loves his children. Like, okay. What if he made this great salary? He owned the bus company, but he was estranged from his children. Yeah. (laughs) Like Brian McKnight, right. That's out here trending. Um, you know, not, not, uh, acknowledging his real children and he's remarried and he's like acknowledging some other children so again oh, no. yeah oh girl yeah that's I, have to look into that. that's I, I have seen i have seen his i guess current wife and kids but i I, uh-huh. I didn't know that he had kids before that so yes and he is posting well he posted back in december him and his new wife just had a baby i think back in december or january and he posts on social media you know you are the reason to the little baby that i'm a girl dad and just like all but, his but other he has stuff, a daughter already he has a daughter and two sons <laughs> okay Brian. and he's they don't have a relationship <laughs> so that's what i mean now i'm not saying he's got money like that right. but where on your list is just like it's the yeah. most important and i feel like for me personally this is just my opinion loving their parents um loving their children if they have children yes i would like to, for them to have like a stable job but if it's not stable say they're in between jobs i, I would like for them to have a plan you know yeah. I mean? because again nobody nobody's out here saying like i want to bum i want right. to take care of somebody <laughs> and Who's it's about mindset too <laughs> it's about mindset too because it's like if you're I don't care if you have the best job, right? The way the economy is right now, so many layoffs, like so much True. is changing in different industries. So that man who has, who makes 200K a year mm-hmm. or whatever his salary is could lose it today. But what is his mentality? Is mm-hmm. he going to, is he a hustler? Is he going to get back out here, update his resume, get something new? Is he going to be like, you know, what's his mentality? Because things could be taken away from us so fast. It's more than just what your profession is at the moment that you have to look for and like, right be mindful of yeah for sure and i really liked the entire interview again go check out 
uh, Ebony K. Williams interview with Ayanla Van Sants on the Grio. Um, because just in a broader spectrum, and this could be another topic for another time that we discuss the masculine energy mm-hmm. versus the feminine energy. You know, I've been hearing about that a lot and I, I, it has resonated within me because I didn't realize I was exhibiting some of this behavior in terms of maybe having a little bit too much masculinity, um, inside of me. So this is a little off topic, but, you know, I like the conversation that Yana was just saying that, you know, as women, we, we've been so like hard yep. and this, and Ebony mentioned, she said that she was like, she hadn't been able to find a provider and a protector. So she's like, whatever I can't find, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to do it. And that's fine. Right. That's fine to where you have to do it yourself. You're working hard. But like Ayala was mentioning, Especially on social media, we're like, you know, you're this boss. And I we say it like hashtag boss mom, like mm-hmm. we're this boss, we're this. Sometimes it's been a bit much where it's like, we want to be the man and mm-hmm. the woman. I mean, yeah. so again, you that's know, definitely topic. <laughs> I was gonna say that that could definitely be a whole nother episode for sure. Yeah. We should do because that part spoke to me for sure. Um, it's kind of like two things happening in this conversation, but mm-hmm. me too. And I know a lot of black women can relate. It's like, you feel like you have to fulfill every right. duty because you have no choice. You know, right, I had to. Yeah. And I feel like I have been, I'm trying to tone down the masculine energy. Cause it's mm-hmm. like, 100%. no, you don't have to do this all on your own. Like you don't yeah. have to do that. Like, there you know you can find a better half or a, another half to to help you with that it's balance it's like yes you should have a little bit of masculine energy and then the man should have a little bit of you know feminine energy but yeah balance, balance. i love that i like the word balance and i agree I, maybe we could invite a couple of guests to have a full conversation on that because it's it's a big topic and i think um i um, being engaged now, I mean, my fiance and I have talked about this a lot of times. I have had to check myself because I'm a single mom that's been co-parenting. And, um, and so, like you said, I've had to, like a lot of moms out here, um, have had to take on both roles in some ways and have developed that masculine, that toughness. Mm -hmm. And he's mentioned to me about being, you know, being softer. I would like to be a little softer. And I like, I was so offended at first. I was like mad. Like, what do you, I am not, I'm like the nicest person, you know, but then I could see, you know what I mean? Of like little things that even just having, letting him take the trash out or like letting him do stuff, you know what I mean? Um, so anyway, it's like a whole, it, it's definitely a whole nother topic. I just yeah. love that they really touched on perhaps. And at the end of the interview, Ayanla just said, listen to all my sisters out here, what you've been, what you've been doing is not wrong or bad. And what you've been taught as women is not wrong or bad. Let's be open to thinking about, it could be a different way of doing things. Just like we, a previous episode talked about gentle parenting. That's different than what a lot of us grew up with. Mm -hmm. And so it takes some time. I think looking at ourselves in terms of that masculine energy and, and stuff, you know, what can we do? Maybe take an introspective, you know, look yeah. into ourselves of. Yeah. Even, we, even uh, when she touched things. on. Um, women, black women having this masculine energy and how our children perceive that, like, you mm-hmm. know, if, if you're taking on all these roles, right. And then you're complaining, like, Oh, I got to do this about myself, blah, blah. And then yeah. your child is going to perceive that. And then how is that going to affect them in the future? So she kind of mm-hmm. touched on that a little bit um, too. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to take it all on, don't, project that you're mad about it you know yeah yeah Um, that's true so many this is like such a great conversation again watch the interview guys um i was saying briefly earlier i feel bad for ebony because a lot of people are going in on her i think you know again she's dated white men so people are like you know you're saying you went dated bus driver you date the you know it's a lot of layers but i think at the end of the day as women we can understand what ebony is saying and let's just try to find a balance like you mentioned definitely definitely so we got some ideas for future episodes (laughs) um but thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode of behind glamorina moms on a mission we have a passion for building sisterhood through wellness and creating a safe space where all women feel like they belong. Yep. And be sure to visit Glamorina.com um, to shop culturally inspired activewear that reminds you that you are enough. And until next time, stay well. Let's go.